Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have a really cool Service Master Restore box on the bench. And this is what we're doing the video on today. No, just totally kidding. It's a box that holds whatever could potentially be inside the box, which is a little different than what we've been doing on the channel to date. We have a Commodore box, at least if that's any indication of what might be inside this, this box. So I'm really excited to do something a little different on the channel. Hope you enjoy. Let's get right to it. And we're back, and I'm really excited to be able to do this on the channel today. I've had this in storage for around a month, month and a half. You know, I've been putting it off. I've been doing other projects and other things, but I'm really excited to be able to do this because I had a Commodore when I was younger. Definitely, um, definitely want to showcase this on the Retro Recall. It's an older computer, so it fits. And, you know, I'll rely on everybody's comments down below, the interaction. Really looking forward to hearing from everybody and definitely really excited to be able to do this on the, uh, on the channel. Okay, first thing we're going to do is just open the box up and see what we have inside. And the box is quite heavy. So we're going to, I think I'm going to do is just pull this over here. The first thing I'm going to do is pull out, which I feel is the actual computer itself. Okay, so what's really cool as well is that it comes with these really cool covers, the Commodore covers. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the box off the bench, just so it gives us a little more uh, room to work on and get it all set up. Okay, and we are back with a different camera view. I think this is much better to be able to showcase this, but again... Uh, we'll talk right about this. We have the cover, uh, the original one of the original Commodore covers, Commodore computers. So definitely, uh, definitely really cool to have that as well. And then, so here we have the star of the show, the bread box <laughs> uh, that I understand that's been called. It's a Commodore VIC twenty. You know, I know that there's been lots of these around, and uh, you know, I just really, really excited to get my hands back on one of them since I was a kid because. Again, I haven't had one and it's just really nice to nice to have. Now, the actual system itself seems to be in really good shape. We have the keyboard here and the keys all seem to be intact. No issues at all. Even the function keys. I believe these are function keys here, the F keys. Power lights there. The, even the sticker itself seems to be in pretty good shape. I mean, the system's yellowed, rightly so. Over the years, it happens. Definitely something we would like to possibly retrobrite. I've seen this done on a few channels uh, where that's been retrobrited. It'd be exciting to, to do that. And on the side over here, we have, looks like a control port, so probably a game port uh, port there. We have our on off switch, I believe there. Again, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have our power adapter. It looks like a DIN connector for power. Okay, on the back here, we have lots of uh, options. So we have what looks like our cartridge port for our game cartridge. Then we have our audio video port, I believe. That's for connecting the um, unit to you know, like a TV or what have you that we will need. And then we also have what looks like a serial peripheral port. And this is based on my research. Then we have a cassette interface port. And I might have a cassette drive here. And then we also have a user uh, modem port on the end there as well. So this system is quite old. I just want to see the condition of the inside of the machine. And I'll be very careful, of course, pulling it apart just in case there's any ribbon cables or anything that we have to be mindful of. Okay, let's get this apart here and see what kind of shape this system is in on the inside. Oh, it's exciting working on stuff you haven't before and love to see what's inside here. Okay, so we have the top there. We'll just be very careful how we open this up. I see the wires there, and I don't want to do anything to damage the keyboard or any of the connections that we have. I'm just going to carefully do that, and we should be good to go. So you can see on the inside of the board here, everything looks pretty darn good, considering the age of it. I mean, yes, there's some dirt inside the machine. I mean, that's to be expected. We have our, our looking at all the chipsets, looking at all the different um components and just making sure we don't have anything that is worrisome or looks like it's uh you know going to blow on us or anything like that but i mean i do see 
I do see that connection for the uh, power light just on an angle there, and it was kind of slightly off, so I'll put that back on there. But outside of that, I mean, everything's looking pretty darn good on here. Obviously, I need to learn a bit more about this and all the different components on Adrian's digital basement. He does quite a bit of work on Commodores and VIC-20s and all those different things. So definitely, uh, definitely learn a lot from him on that. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, the caps look good. It's looking good. I mean, there's nothing on here that looks damaged and everything, and I don't want to do any further to it. I'm seeing if I can find a date code on here. Just looking at the different chipsets. I don't know if that's an indication of 982. Um, just keep on looking here. 82 and 83, 11th week, 83. So it's probably the year 82, 83 is what we're looking at. We have another 83 over here. Yeah, so that's probably what it is. Built in 82, 83 is when this would have come out. Let's put it back together and see what else is in the box here. Okay, let's carefully put this back on. It just kind of slides in like that. Oh, not with the wire, of course. I'll make sure that's not connected. Nice and easy. Well, I say it's easy, but just to make sure it's all sitting in there nicely so it's not causing any difficulty. And make sure the wires are pinched, and that looks good there. And with the plastics being so brittle, I'm just making sure that everything I'm doing here is nice and easy. I'm not doing any sort of over tightening of anything. I mean, there's not a lot of pressure on this, so no need to, to do that. Okay, there we are. We have the last one in place there now. And I just do a little bit of a turn there, which should be good. Flip it back around and everything's back to normal. Yeah, it'd be really cool to take this all apart and, you know, get the keyboard separated and really uh, retrobrite this because, I mean, just give it a good scrubbing, of course, but then it'd be so cool to be able to have that all restored back to the original color. Let's move that aside for a moment and put on top of that beautiful cover and we'll see what else we have as part of this packet. No, this is not a Thrift Finds video. This is just stuff that came with this system. So pretty straightforward controller. So nice to have, of course, as well. Let's keep digging. What else do we have here? Okay, we have another star of the show, so to speak. So here we have a Commodore cassette drive. And yeah, I mean... The generally the understanding I always had was I always used the cartridges when I was in my, on my system. I never really had a cassette type driven for software. Definitely interested in learning more about it. And uh, let's see what we have here. So C2N cassette and then the serial number made in Taiwan. Cool to cool to have and cool to have as part of the system. Let's keep going here. And uh, I'm sure the fun part will be getting everything all plugged in and connected. So we have some games here we'll pull out just because I'm just pulling them out in the order that they're easily accessible. So we have the RAM cartridge, apparently. So it says, uh, yeah, 16K RAM cartridge. I don't know if that obviously helps out. <laughs> uh, probably required for, you know, the games that run on the cassette, because obviously my understanding, keep me honest in the comments, this would plug into the back of the unit itself uh, where the cartridge slot is, and then you would run the cassette games uh, through the cassette port. Again, keep me honest, please, everybody, because that's just my understanding or my theory. And then we also have GORF. You can't have any VIC-20 without, uh, without GORF. So there we are. We have it. And then we have Cosmic Cruncher, I believe. So the label's coming off a little bit here, but yeah. Cosmic Cruncher. I don't remember playing this. I definitely played Gorf when I was younger, but uh, again, nice. Let's keep going and see what else we have here. Yeah, okay. We have Super Smash, whatever this is. Never saw or heard of that yet either, but the more games, the merrier. And, you know, a lot of these cartridges honestly could use some cleaning. So, I mean, I do see some oxidation along the fingers here a little bit. So I think it'll be good along the card edge. So I think it'll be good to like scrub that down with some isopropyl alcohol, get some of the rid of some of that uh, residue there. But because I want these to last as long as as long as possible, and we also have Jupiter Lander. Now I I've heard of this. I don't I don't remember playing it, but this is not uh, you know definitely rings bells for me for sure. Okay, let's see what else we have here. We have something. We have. C Fox for the Vic 20 by Broderbund 1982. Wow. Okay. I'm not familiar with this game. If it is a game, I assume it is. Uh, the Broderbund uh, items that I've used are like the print shops and what have you for the early Windows systems, but uh, never 
uh, game wise. So cool to have. Okay, what else is sitting inside this tickle trunk that we have? We have another box of games. <laughs> Oh, again, just really, really cool. Okay, what else do we have going on here? We have pinball. Apparently, there's some pricing on here. But anyway, uh, we have pinball uh, here. What else do we have? We have poker. Really cool to play as well. We have human-engineered software, so HES Writer. So is this like a like a notepad of some sort? I mean, again, uh, if you let know, let me know down in the comments. Then we have Avenger. I've heard of that for sure. Definitely exciting. Visible solar system. I love this box it came in, just more organized. Garden Wars, whatever that is. You know, is that like Plants vs. Zombies from 1982? <laughs> I know, terrible. Uh, programmers Aid Cartridge. Gorf, again, we have two of them. Can't have enough of those guys. And Home Babysitter. That's interesting. And a lot of these cartridges, like I mentioned, have some green on them on the bottoms. Probably wouldn't hurt to do some cleaning of those, which we will have to do. Now, let's see what else we have going on down here. We have some tape cartridges, which obviously, to my understanding, are games. Now, I have never used a tape drive for uh, any sort of games. I've always used either a cartridge base, you know, whatever the system was, all the way through to uh, other media, but never, never a cassette tape. Grade five and six, decimal multiplication. So an educational type application of some sort. Okay, let's keep going here. So this is what we required to hook it up to the television itself. So we have a Commodore. Uh, this looks like in the adapter that would convert from the, the DIN type connection, the signal cable going through to the coaxial cable. And this comes with couple options, obviously, for uh, switching between TV and antenna. Just before I move on there, actually, uh, just really cool to call out that we having the Radio Shack uh, symbol again. I mean, I shopped at Radio Shack quite a bit growing up, and having the Radio Shack, uh, anything Radio Shack is really cool to still see uh, and have in the collection. Okay, not one, but two tape drives. <laughs> so the uh, person who got this or gave this to me, you know, she said, here, have the second drive. Uh, hopefully it works going from having never experienced any of these drives and this is the broken one but never experienced any of these drives to you know having two of them uh, i think that's pretty awesome to have lots on the bench lots of stuff lots of goodies we have oh yeah look at that another controller <laughs> i've only ever seen these on tv or on youtube videos i've never actually held one in my hand so this looks like the primary power adapter because it has the uh, connection here the din connection but my goodness that ever ever heavy i mean you weren't moving this around too much that's for sure there we go we'll move everything out of the way there we are well it wouldn't be fun unless you had instruction manuals for everything. So <laughs> we have the original documentation for CFOX. It says you had to load it with the computer turned off, insert cartridge label side up into cartridge slot at the back of the computer. Turn on the TV or monitor, turn on computer, press joystick button to start to play. And CFOX, so it looks like it's some sort of submarine type game. So there we go. HES writer, so instruction manual comes with that as well. I love the type font on this. Yeah, not too often you see that. It looks like it was typed up with a... A typewriter actually the way it's written so this program allows you to enter text into the vic 20 or sorry the vic via the keyboard edit and format the text before printing it programmers aid cartridge so another great reference manual so section one introduction to the vic 20 programmers aid cartridge VIC-20 Programmers A cartridge has been designed to help both new and experienced basic programmers to write, edit, and debug programs quickly and easily. This is achieved by the AID commands, which are automatically incorporated into the VIC operating system when the cartridge is inserted. The cartridge also assigns some of the AID commands and some basic keywords to the function keys, thus giving the programmer his own shorthand notation during program writing well i mean that's pretty obvious gorf <laughs> okay we have visible solar system so fly your starship through our solar system study the planets and moons land on each planet and calculate your new weight and age learn real astronomy and have hours of fun at the same time so would have been another this looks more of an educational explore, exploration type game gives our there's our solar system right there yeah i mean this is so cool Information about all the different planets gives you a complete breakdown. I mean, this would have been the 
the way you got information, right? Is through the books and stuff like that. Home Babysitter, you're never too young to use the VIC-20. Home Babysitter is a perfect friend to your youngster. Reduce the banging of pots and pans in the kitchen. Picture book instructions teach your child the letters of the alphabet. Numbers up to 20, even a funny face make. Give your preschoolers a head start on technology. Hours and hours of fun learning. So it gives all the instructions to parents how to use the uh, software. Okay, awesome. Garden Wars, uh, step into the Garden of Deadly Delights. This exciting maze game has plenty of action and thrills and hours and hours of fun for everybody to take spiders, snakes, centipedes, lizards, and they're all after your garden in Wars. So this is like, like I said, plants versus uh, you, I guess, um, back in the day. So again, again, gives you all the instructions and how to access it. This is really cool to see, actually. I'm really happy this is in here because, again, not ever using this system. Having this is, is good because then I can learn how to how to access it. But it says suitable for use with a VIC, uh, PET, and CVM, series computer. So being able to use it with multiple systems as well is definitely helpful. It's nice to have there as well. Spelling Bee, so more software. Uh, three specially designed spelling cassettes for children's up to grade two. A look at the condition of this, just in the original case. Uh, anyway, can't say enough. Awesome to have. Oh my goodness. And we have the complete user's guide all here. Oh, there we go. That's what we're looking about. That's what we're looking for. Having the VIC-20 user guides definitely uh, going to help me along quite a bit to be able to uh, learn how to use it properly. I mean, years have passed, right? So not something that I definitely uh, spend a lot of time on these days. So really cool to try that as well. Okay, the next is the best VIC-20 Commodore software, educational games, business, word processing, home, and personal use. So by the Editors of Consumer's Guide. So this is probably like uh, one of those books you'd buy to say it would give you all the different recommendations of all the current software. Yeah, there we go. So it gives you a description of what it is, what the file size is, what printers it would support, uh, what it's compatible with, and then it gives you a description of each piece of software. So if you're thinking about purchasing a piece of software, you just take this cool little handy book, a reference guide, go back and see if you can find it. If you could, it gives you an uh, you know some information on it. And then it gives you also user ratings here. So overall ratings of seven, documentations of two, graphics and sounds an eight, playability addictive, difficulty expert. What game is this? Alien Shootout is uh, Arcade Games AE. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool that it gives you all this information, especially if you're looking for, uh, you know, a game and you weren't exactly sure. So it'd be cool to look some of these games up there, actually. And then we have personal computing on the VIC-20, a friendly computer guide. Getting started, experiment a little. The VIC-20 is saying it's ready. So it's just basically walking you through uh, how to utilize the system. More so, the more interactive here versus the actual manual um this is more geared to you know people your first computer program how to type it all up and and uh, what to do to learn the system so and it explains all the different you know back there it showed syntax error and explains what that means just so cool i hope these manuals and everything are on archive.org i hope archive.org with everything going on survives but um again if it's not let me know and i'm happy to upload some of this stuff commodore authorized warranty locations listed by state oh, okay so if you had a problem with your commodore you can find your location and go there for authorized service repair service probably for the warranties and stuff we also have typing tutor two programs on cassette tape for the unexpanded vic 20 so typing tutor I just love, you know, growing up, I used Typing Tutor quite a bit. Um, as a result, I credit that to my easy courses when I was in school because I already knew how to type. Commodore Computer, the one to grow on. Consumer Division Retail Price List. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. So, it gives you all the different hardware, special hardware, Victorian recreational games on cartridge. And then it gives you the price list of what they would be back in the day. Pretty sure this may not be online and people wanted me to share this. Again, just drop a note in the comments and I'll do what I can to accommodate it. Definitely want to see this stuff enjoyed by all. Then we have, again, warranty repair, nothing new there. Then it says how to use the 3, 8, and 16K memory expanders. So it tells you exactly how to do that instruction by instruction. I'm not going to do 
all of this on today's video. This is more of an overview of this system. Definitely going to help me along nicely by having these. And maybe I'll do a future video on uh, today. We're just going to test it, but a future video on just doing some of the extra stuff on, that this can do, obviously. So let's get this stuff kind of moved out of the way because we have more coming up here. Not much more, but enough that uh, I gotta make room here. Another awesome book. We have Commodore VIC-20 Computer Math Book 1. Elementary Mathematics grades 1 through 6. So look at that. Oh, this is just fantastic. Just look at this stuff here. You know, it's it's a, starting to show a little bit of age. Yeah, I just want to... Anyway, I'm just, I'm just dumbfounded by this. I think this is absolutely great. I definitely want to try this stuff out in the system. But the fact that it's a complete system with all these extra accessories just really makes my day. We have the Commodore VIC-20 Computer Educator English Book 1, CES 3, or sorry, 111. Uh, open it up here, and here we are. We have software. It says here, these are the students for whom the Computer Educator Language Series is designed. Hey, you're struggling, so we're going to create this stuff for you. Yeah, just anyway, just absolutely so cool. So it says English English Book 1 on that. I definitely want to try this out. I, I, I've, I've never used a cassette type uh, reader before for any sort of software. So just really interesting. We have English Book 2. So again, the same idea comes with the same uh, sort of uh, style here, but... It's just so awesome that these are absolutely complete. So even even better. Um, so thanks again to the uh, person who got these for me. We have the Commodore VIC-20 Home Calculation Program Pack. So expense calendar 1 and 2, home inventory 1 and 2, loan and mortgage calculator 1 and 2, personal finance 1 and 2, personal finance 3 and 4, VIC typewriter and typing tutor. There we go. Uh, well, yeah, it comes with a manual as well. So let's look through that. You know, this looks like, uh, yeah, this is just so it talks about all the different programs that we have here. Talks about all the different features. Talks about what's required, how to operate the actual programs. Oh, well, we have a little guy here as well. So big programs are easy to load and fun to use. All complete. Really going to try that in the future. Let's see what else we have going on. And I believe this is the last thing in the box. So... Everybody can uh, celebrate here. So we have an introduction to BASIC, part two. Comprehensive Teach Yourself Programming Series for VIC-20, Commodore Computer. Let's open that up. So it looks to be an original Commodore-based item. So we have a couple tapes over here. So we have tape one and tape two for the introduction to BASIC. And then so we have the actual book. It gives you how to use it, I imagine. And that's actually, well, that is, the, those are the, okay, so the rest is the book. Cassettes are over here, as opposed to the other ones where they're in the back. So the cassettes are in the front, and then you have the manual um, to go through all of it. Just so cool. And again, if any of this is not on archive.org, and anybody wants to see this stuff in detail, I can definitely uh, work to scan this in. These things, obviously, will be a little easier to do because I can take the pages out and put them through the ADF. The coil books uh, are a little tougher, but we can definitely accommodate. That's it. That's everything in the box. I just triple checked. We have all the components required to get this together. So I'm going to clean the bench off and we'll get this beautiful machine hooked up and see if it works. Okay, and we're back and we're all set up on the bench. It's an absolute mess. <laughs> the joys of the older systems. Now, I was having some difficulty with getting the picture on the screen. It just wasn't working through that switch box that the Radio Shack one that I had used, I had worked on uh, trying to get it going and it wasn't working. I was like, well, wait a minute. And I looked inside and the coaxial cable at the center stem of the coaxial cable w wasn't out far enough. So I had to, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, I pulled the end off, uh, worked on it, crimped a new one and was able to uh, get that going. So we'll flip on the machine here and see if it works. Now, here we are. It is working. We do have an image, but in, I don't know if it's coming up on this, on the camera, but it's definitely some, you know, lines, vertical lines going on here, some distortions. I know there's better equipment we could be using. We're using that old box and I have no idea how old that is. One thing I'm going to do is look at getting a replacement box for this, an adapter going from the big 20 to the TV. So here we are. We do have it stable now working. It is on the screen. It is, <laughs> uh, took quite a bit to get that going, but we are good to go here now.
Okay, so we can't do this without actually writing some sort of program. So let's do that now. Let's go 10 and we'll do print. And I will comment that the keyboard is kind of, uh, yeah, just harder to type on for sure. Uh, let's go back here for a second and do print. There we go. And we'll type in, uh, let's see, TRR 2023, the retro recall 2023. And we'll go and put our colon, or sorry, our semicolon in, hit enter, and then we'll line 20. And we'll type in go to and 10, and we will run. There we are. It's working perfectly. Awesome. Glad I was able to fix that connection. Let's, uh, well, that can run indefinitely, but let's click on run stop there. And we're good to go there. So I think the next step then is to test out the game. I can't wait to plug this in and put Gorf back in. I haven't played this in years. Okay, here we go. 1992. Or 82, sorry. No, I Oh, I'm terrible. No, leave me alone. We're all friends here. I'm your favorite friendly neighborhood rocket ship. Oh, you can go forward too. Jeez, I forgot about that. What's this button do? Oh, it fires for me. Okay, well that's easier. Oh. Tell me this isn't bringing back memories for everybody. And if it isn't, well, <laughs> getting destroyed doesn't help anything. Ooh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was too confident there. Oh, come on, guys. I'm getting better at this now. Oh, uh, well, I say that, but... Space One, Space Cadet, Mission One, Astro Battles. Oh, terrible. No bonus. I landed the bloody thing. <laughs> Let me know the fuel. All right, well. Okay, so we have Cosmic Cruncher. Press F1 to start. Is this a Pac-Man type game? It is. Awesome. Oh, this is fun. And there we are. The Vic 20. Just, just amazing machine. Just having a blast from the past. 
use in these old games. I, I like to test them all. I like to go through all the cartridges, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done to kind of clean this system up. We definitely want to get that, first and foremost, get a better way to connect it to the television for sure, because there's definitely some issues going on with that adapter, with the resolution, and it's not maintaining its sync on the TV. And with the tape decks themselves, the tape players, uh, we definitely want to go and get those kind of looked at. I would like to take them apart, clean them up, make sure the belts are good in them, just make sure that they're perfectly good as well. And then the cartridges themselves, we definitely have to do some cleaning up on the card edge as well as the receiver on the actual board itself. There's definitely some uh, corrosion on some of these uh, cartridges, so we definitely have to get that corrosion stopped before it continues to do any damage. Anyway, so much work that we can do to this system. This has hopefully been a great introductory to this another amazing find on the Retro Recall, and I hope everybody has really enjoyed this blast from the past. That said, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps this channel out. Hit the notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified when I make new content such as this. Please comment down below with some suggestions. Maybe you have different experiences with this. I definitely try to do everything I can to reply down below and I love the interaction on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.